Hey, so uh, I've been messing around with the NVIDIA Instant Neural Graphics Primitives uh, application uh, or utility, I don't know how you want to describe it, but what it does is it takes video input and then converts it over in pretty much real time into a, a 3D represented object, a 3D, into a 3D space, kind of. Um, some limitations to it. I can figure out a way to export textures. You can export an OBJ 3D file, but I could not um, figure out. Let me just turn that down. I could not figure out how to export textures from it. So, um, yeah. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video just to run through my installation process. Not the whole thing, just, just some of the, the pain points that I got stuck on in case it helps uh, someone else in the future. Um, and let's see, da -da. And, and yeah, it's pretty cool, um, but it's just not, um, it's not quite ready for, uh, yeah, I mean, if you could, build, uh, let me build the ice monster here. So this is what it looks like in real time when it's, when it's creating this uh, 3D representation. You can see the blue ice monster forming there. Uh, this is done from like 96 images. I haven't done any processing. I haven't checked for blurry images or anything. Um, but it's, if you give it a minute, it's pretty good. What it, it's pretty amazing actually what it comes up with. The only thing that it needs is to be able to export textures. If we could do that, this would be so, so ridiculously useful to uh, create background objects and layouts and scenes. Because you could, you could basically just film a location and then <laughs> just turn it into a 3d 3d object or you know or, or objects like this one as well I mean that's just crazy uh, you can go into the crop section here as well and if I, just, if I zoom out you can see what this is doing um, this is I don't think this helps with the training but it definitely helps when you're creating a mesh because uh, this, when the mesh is being generated, it works kind of like voxels. Um, so the, the larger your scene scale is, the, the more the voxels, are, the polygons are spread out through the object. I mean, look at that. That's cool, isn't it? Jeez. Let me just stop the training. Yeah, so now you get a, a, a smoother frame rate. You can also put on smooth camera motion. That's cool. And that's after, what, like a minute, minute and a half of processing. That's perfectly, perfectly usable. Look at that. That's perfectly usable as a background object. I mean, this is amazing in a, in a couple of minutes. And then you can go down to snapshots, marching cubes, hit, hit mesh it. There's your resolution. I find it, it consistently crashes at a thousand. Um, obviously, the higher you pump that up, the more, the more ac not accurate it will be, but the more, yeah, the more accurate it will be, I guess. But it's still super lumpy and it looks just like this in, uh, in Blender. It's not, it's not really usable. But, you know, if you could put a texture on it, I think this would be a lot more passable. And if you add vertex colors, I guess this is what it would look like if it could export vertex colors, which isn't very usable, really. Um, so this is, uh, whatever this is, maybe this is like a, maybe that maybe if you could export a point cloud, I haven't actually looked into that. Maybe you can export, export a point cloud. Maybe if there was a way to export a point cloud or a volume, Oh, this would maybe this would work better. I don't even know if you could. If that, is that even possible? I don't know. But this is one to look out for. I think in the future this is going to be pretty cool. Hopefully, if uh, if some some of the geniuses working on this keep working on it, <laughs> maybe something uh, awesome will pop out from it. I'm not one of those geniuses though. But uh, I will talk through uh, some of the pain points I got while I was installing it. 
um, just in the hopes that it helps someone else. So for requirements, you need a. Uh, I've got an RTX 3090, but you need you need a NVIDIA GPU. Doesn't say if you need an RTX one or not. So maybe the old ones work as well. Uh, you need to something capable of compiling. So I used. I had Windows 2022, but I had to, uh, had to install 2019 because it doesn't work with 2022. This doesn't work with 2022. Um, I haven't used it with Linux yet. Uh, CUDA, that's pretty straightforward. Hit that, install it. CMake, again, straightforward. Uh, I think I did need to have environment variables added. Let me just get those up. So for CMake, I'm pretty sure on the path here, I needed to add CMake. Yeah, there it is. So I've installed it to C program file, CMake bin. You can install it wherever you want. I think you can just download the zip and then just point the path with this new to the to the bin. Yeah, I followed the instructions to install call map. This is, I'll get to this in a minute, um, which is, this is what's used to create the camera data from the images. Uh, I followed the instructions, it didn't work, so I also added in either the bin or the lib. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but maybe I just needed to do a restart for this to work. So follow the instructions, do a full system restart, and then if it doesn't work, add in the bin or the lib. Um, dun, dun, dun. I think that's pretty much all in the path. It was just the CMake that I added. Follow the instructions, but I, I think that was that was it for that. Um, I also needed to set NVIDIA underscore visible underscore devices in caps to zero and CUDA underscore visible underscore devices in caps to zero because I've got two GPUs so for whatever reason it wouldn't build for me and I had to set, set this to this and restart. Uh, oh, did I restart? I might not. So not everything, not everything in environment variables requires a restart. So just try it, and if it doesn't work, then do a restart. I think that's pretty much it for the environment variables. Um, I also got stuck with having a space in the file path. Make sure you don't have a space. I should know this. C++ doesn't like spaces in their projects. Um, so, yeah, make sure instant ngp is instant dash ngp, not instant space ngp. <laughs> uh, these are the commands I used uh, that worked for me. Uh, Python call map to nerf is what takes a video located here use, uh, and extracts frames at, fr at two frames per second and it creates an images folder which you can then uh, so here's the script uh, call map to nerf here what that will do is it will create an images folder here uh, and number everything correctly and it will create a transforms JSON is called transforms JSON data nerf I suppose uh, yeah it's called the transforms JSON which you then have to copy into wherever you want uh, to run the next script the build script uh, I kept everything in the nerf next to the fox examples and I've created another Buddha example here um, to run the ice monster you have to run this command so uh, well, that's the one that I've just run, uh, which is creating this one. Is it still it's still processing? Okay, still training while I'm talking. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not improved much more. It probably won't get any better now. I think if I had better quality video, this would this would definitely be better. But uh, I just did this very quickly. So, um, yeah, so make sure everything's installed here in this order as well. Um, make sure that the Python requirements, check this out, make sure that all the requirements have been added, all the modules for Python. I had to install OpenCV. I already had that installed, so I didn't need to do that, but yeah, there's a various different requirements that you need in there. If you're running Linux, do that. This is all for Windows, obviously. Um, so yeah, git clone, that's pretty straightforward. CMake build command. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's once you've cloned it, you use these two commands to, to build it. If you haven't got your dependencies installed, this is where you'll get errors. And, uh, 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 yeah, so this one, this one here, 
Uh, I didn't try this one, but you could. You might find you might find that this one works for you. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, you can also. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. So to get your own, to to figure out how to work, how to get your own video in here instead of using the example one, go to this link here for this document, and this will talk you through it. Uh, it'll talk you through installing. Uh, it'll talk you through running this script, but making sure that you have the call map. This, this, I think, this is the thing that does the magic of getting the camera data to be able to approximate the three D location of the different points in space of the objects. It's magic. Um, yeah, you need the transforms, Jason. It's all. It's all pretty straightforward. I, I, I didn't really have any problems with this. Uh, da -da. Yeah. That's it, really. I think that was uh, that was all. That was that was that was all the problems that I encountered, covered. So yeah, uh, that's it. Fingers crossed. Uh, this will keep being developed and uh, keep on improving because this would be so cool to be able to use in three D projects um, if the textures could be added as well. That's it. Hope hopefully it was useful uh, to someone, and uh, yeah. That's it. Cheers.